I want to remind you just one more time, in case you came in a little late after announcements or something, that uh, we postponed the kids' trip, their outing to Dussel Farms, uh, Dussel's Farm, I should say. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do that next week. Our message series has been on the life of David. And we are seeing how God raised David up to be king, while at the same time, Saul continued his downward slide away from God. Now, last week, we looked at the story of David and Goliath. This week, we will see what happened between David and Saul as a direct result of David's victory over Goliath. But first, find a few people to greet and tell them that this morning we're going to talk about love, jealousy, and fear. Go ahead. So long to shame, walk through the sorrow, out of the fire, into tomorrow. So flush the pills, face the fear, feel the way disappear, when coming clean. All right, as you make your way back to your seats. What else do you do? After you greet, you take your seat. And while you're coming back to your seats, I'll go ahead and pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for the, the ability and the energy to just praise and worship you. Father, thank you for the warmth of fellowship when we come together. Thank you for just lifting our spirits. And now, Father, 
Speaking of spirit, we pray that we would avail ourselves to your Holy Spirit and allow you to just speak to us. Help us to understand and direct us, our thoughts, our actions, our words. Father, we pray that you would be pleased with our offering of worship, and we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me start with questions. I have two questions for you. One, can you wait a minute while I change my mic already? Okay? All right. Back to the two questions. Do you ever struggle with jealousy? And does it make you happy? Well, the answer to those questions are yes and no. I mean, yes, everyone struggles with jealousy at certain times, and no, it never makes us happy. And yet we do it anyways. Well, today we're going to be looking at the topics of love, jealousy, and fear as seen through the relationships of Jonathan, David, and Saul. Jonathan is Saul's oldest son, and he, he, he's famous for his friendship with David. Today's passage that we're going to be looking at teaches a very simple truth. Here it is. Love brings you closer to people, while jealousy and fear drive you apart. In fact, as we look at these points this morning, you're going to notice how almost every single sermon point that I, that I share with you has two words in it, you and others. Love makes you seek unity with others. Love makes you put others before yourself. Jealousy prevents you from taking pleasure in others' success. Jealousy robs you of the joy of your own successes. Jealousy will make you strike out at others. Fear will keep you from seeing God at work in others. Fear will keep you from loving others as you should. Love, jealousy, and fear all have to do with how you relate to others. They also have to do with how you relate to God and how God will use you in this life. So let's get started. First, let's look at Jonathan's love for David. Jonathan and David enjoyed a special friendship, which was all the more remarkable because Jonathan was the next in line for the throne. I mean, he was Saul's son. Uh, when Saul was done being king, it, it just, you, you know, people expected Jonathan to be the next king. And God was blessing David with a lot of success. If anyone should have been jealous or afraid of David, you would have thought that it was Jonathan. But instead of giving in to jealousy or fear, Jonathan reached outward with love. Now, there are a couple of things that we can learn from Jonathan's love for David. Uh, and we're going to be looking in 1 Samuel 18 this morning. But first of all, love makes you seek unity in others. Love makes you seek unity with others. Jealousy and fear drive people apart, but love brings you together. And if you have your Bible or your Bible app, go ahead and find 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. Now, we're going to go through the first 16 verses, but we're just going to do them one or a couple at a time. So let's start with 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. And I'll be using the New International Version translation, so that's the same translation you'll see up on the screen. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. We've mentioned Jonathan just briefly in this sermon series towards the beginning, but this is the first time that we see David and Jonathan together. And this verse marks the beginning of their friendship, one of the most beautiful and celebrated friendships ever recorded. Jonathan and David were kindred spirits. They were the best of friends. Jonathan obviously was impressed by David's faith in, in, in going up against Goliath. I mean, Jonathan himself had shown a similar faith earlier when he led the attack on the Philistines back in chapters 13 and 14. It was a very similar scene to the David and Goliath. Saul and his whole army, you know, were, were, were holding back fear again. And Jonathan was the one who acted boldly in faith. 
So there was this unity between Jonathan and David. Psalm 133 verse 1 says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people love together or live together in unity. And Paul tells the Philippians in Philippians chapter 2 verse 2, Make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. You see, we can seek an even greater unity today. You and I can because because of the Holy Spirit and and each of us is a believer. Jonathan and David became one in spirit and Jonathan loved David as himself. Love makes you seek unity with others. Secondly, love also makes you put others before yourself. Love makes you or helps you put others before yourself. Look at Verses 2, 3, and 4. After, oh, oh, I'm sorry, verse 2. From the day Saul kept David with him and did not let him return. From that day Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing. And he gave it to David. Along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Right here in this moment, David and Jonathan move from being one in spirit to a committed friendship. Jonathan makes a covenant of friendship with David. He takes off his royal robe, and he gives it to David along with his tunic, his sword, the bow, and his belt. Jonathan, as I said, was the next in line to be the king. And these clothes and weapons were symbolic of Jonathan's position as heir to the throne. And giving David these items was symbolic of Jonathan passing on to David his right to the throne. Talk about committed friendships. Once again, if anyone had a right to be jealous of David, it would have been Jonathan. But Jonathan seems to have understood early on that David is going to be the next king. And you know what? Jonathan is just fine with that. He's fine with it because he loves David as And instead of giving in to jealousy, he puts David before himself. That's what love does. It puts others first. Romans chapter 12, verse 10 says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. You're to seek the honor of other people before you you to think about other people before you i mean it's not enough that you you just don't mind the other person getting some honor but you should actually prefer to honor others above yourself that's really hard to do i think maybe only with our kids do we really get this concept right because we want better things for them than ourselves But true love makes you put all others before yourself. These verses mark the beginning of David and Jonathan's friendship. And what a beautiful beginning it is. I mean, Jonathan becomes one in spirit with David, and he loves him as himself. He makes a covenant of friendship with David, and he puts David before himself. Love makes you seek unity with others, and it makes you put others before yourself. Now, as we look at the next couple of verses... Now we're, we're moving from Jonathan's love for David to Saul's jealousy of David. Saul's jealousy of David. And here, Saul's jealousy stands in direct contrast to Jonathan's love. There are a lot of problems with jealousy, if you haven't figured that out in your life by now. And, and the passage that we're looking at today highlights three of them. First of all, jealousy prevents you from taking pleasure in other people's success. Jealousy prevents you from taking pleasure in other people's successes. Look at verse 5. Whatever mission Saul sent him on, talking about David, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. And this pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. So Saul starts giving David more tasks. And everything that David does, he does exceptionally well, successfully. 
After the incident with Goliath, David is popular with all the people. He's a national hero. I, I assume that back in that day, if, if they had action figures, David would have been an action figure. David is so successful that Saul even gives him a high rank in the army, and that pleased everyone. Now, we already know it pleased Jonathan because Jonathan loved David as himself, but it also pleased all of the troops, all of the soldiers, all of the army, and Saul's officers as well. But guess who's not mentioned here as being pleased? Saul. Saul's not pleased at all. Saul is jealous. And jealousy prevents you from taking pleasure in other people's success. God doesn't want you to be jealous. He doesn't want you to be jealous of other people. We read in James chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, But if you harbor bitter envy, envy is a synonym for jealous. If you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven but as earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy, where you have jealousy, and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Jealousy not only prevents you from, taking, from, from not taking pleasure in other people's successes, but it also robs you of the joy of your own success. Jealousy robs you of the joy of your own success. Let's look at the next couple of verses, verses 6 through 9. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, that would, was Goliath, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with timbrels and lyres. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. So Saul's jealousy of David goes all the way back to David's victory over Goliath. When the men were returning from battle, the, men, the women came out to meet Saul. That's a good thing, right? And, and, and they're singing and they're dancing and they're celebrating. And that's a good thing. And, 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 and as they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands. And that's a good thing. And then they sang, and David his tens of thousands. Uh-oh, that's not a good thing. Because Saul was angry. He was angry because they credited David with tens of thousands, and Saul only had thousands. Only thousands. Jealousy not only prevents you from taking pleasure in other people's successes, it robs you. It, it steals you of the joy of your own successes. When you're, when you're looking at other people and concerned about what they're doing and how God is using them, you're not recognizing how God is using you. Theodore Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. It's hard to count your own blessings when you're busy counting somebody else's. God wants you to take joy in what he's doing in your life without comparing yourself to anybody else, especially when it comes to his kingdom, because there is only one kingdom. So how can we be jealous that someone else is advancing God's kingdom? You see, Saul was jealous because he considered it his kingdom, and it wasn't his kingdom. It's God's kingdom. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Don't think of yourself in comparison with others. Think of yourself with a realistic appraisal of the unique personality of this, of the unique gifts that God has given you. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4 says, Each one should test his own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. Jealousy is a thief. It prevents you from taking pleasure in other people's successes. It robs you of the joy of your own success. And then third, jealousy will make you strike out at others. It will. 
jealousy will make you strike out at others. Let's see how Saul did that. Look at uh, verses 10 and 11. The next day an evil spirit, uh, a synonym for that would be harmful. The next day a, a harmful spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre as he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand and he hurled it saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. <laughs> so, this is the very next day. The day after they returned from the battle, you know, where all the, the, the women were singing. And, and Saul is in one of his moods. And David is playing the harp to try and calm him down. And David has this, this lyre, this small harp in his hand, and, and Saul has a spear in his. And this harmful spirit from God comes forcefully upon Saul, and he throws the spear at David, trying to pin him to the wall. He does it two times. Now, you've probably heard of rough crowds throwing rotten tomatoes at musicians before, but <laughs> when they start throwing spears, it's time to get out. Jealousy will eventually make you strike out at others. I mean, it starts on the inside, but it doesn't stay there. Jealousy will eventually work its way out. You may not have a spear in your hand, but you've got daggers in your eyes. You may not throw a physical weapon, but you will strike out in other ways, ways with like, like, like ugly words or hurtful actions. And there are a number of what we call sin lists or vice lists in the Bible. And, and the order of the sins listed is very interesting. For example, look up here. This is part of Romans chapter 1, verse 29. It says, they are full of envy. Envy is a synonym for jealousy. They are full of envy, then murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips and slanderers. Did you see what comes first? Jealousy, envy. And then what follows? Murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossip, and slander. Or, or look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. And it, it lists, lists them like this. Jealousy, which one was first? Jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, and factions. First comes jealousy. Then comes the other things. I mean, jealousy is a terrible sin. It prevents you from taking pleasure in other people's successes. It robs you of the joy of your own successes, and it will make you strike out at others. So far, we've looked at Jonathan's love for David, and we've seen Saul's jealousy of David. And then third, we come to Saul's fear of David. Because, you see, jealousy leads to fear. Not the fear like we, we looked at last week, you know, where the Israelites were standing there afraid of Goliath who came out and taunted them for 40 days, twice a day. This is a different kind of fear. It's the fear of being left out. The fear that the other person is going to get the attention or the fear that the other person is going to get the credit or the honor. It's the fear of being dismissed, discounted, uh, overlooked. And jealousy leads to that kind of fear. And fear will do a number of things. One thing it does is it will keep you from seeing God at work in others. Fear will keep you from seeing God's work in others. Look at verses 12, 13, and 14. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David, but he but had departed Saul. So he sent David away from him and gave him command over a thousand men. And David led the troops in their campaigns. And everything he did, he had great success because the Lord was with him. That's interesting. Saul is the one throwing the spears. But verse 12 says Saul was afraid of David. Maybe it's because of the fact that David <laughs> found a way to elude the spear two times, showing Saul that God was with him. But Saul was afraid because the Lord was with David, but the Lord had left Saul. 
Saul keeps giving David higher assignments in the army. I don't know, maybe hoping that, that David's going to get killed in battle or something. But, but in everything David did, he had great success because God was with him. And here Saul is trying to get David killed, but he just ends up giving David all of the experience, all of the military experience that David's going to need to be king. Everything Saul is doing is just working against him and, and helping David. God's doing a great work in David's life. And Saul doesn't get to enjoy any of it because he's all caught up in jealousy and fear. You know, in the New Testament, the church at Corinth had gifted leaders, but they were also full of division and factions, the church in Corinth. Paul has to remind them in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, he says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. God was doing a great work in Corinth through Paul. God was doing a, a great work in Corinth through Apollos. But the Corinthians couldn't see that because they were lining up behind whoever they chose as their leader, they thought. Some of them were playing uh, with their... Paul action figures, and some were playing with their Apollos action figures. But God was doing a great work through both of them. God was doing a great work. Not Paul, he planted. Not Apollos, he watered. But God, because he's the one who makes things grow. Jealousy leads to fear. And fear will keep you from seeing God at work. Then finally, Fear will keep you from loving others the way you should. Yeah, fear stops you from loving others as you should. Look at verses 15 and 16. When Saul saw how successful he was, David, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he led them in their campaigns. Saul should have loved David for all he was doing. I mean, here's David leading the men in all their campaigns, and he's bringing Saul victory after victory after victory. And all the rest of Israel loved David, but not Saul. At first, he loved David, but now Saul was afraid of David. And fear will keep you from loving others as you should. Romans chapter 1 verse, or Romans chapter 13 verse 8 says, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Did you know that you had a debt? I mean, Jesus paid it all for us. He paid our sin debt. But you have a love debt. You have a debt to love each other. It's a debt that we continually owe each other because we're loved by God and we have an obligation to pass that love on to each other. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Now in context, that verse is talking about fear of punishment and love for God, but the general principle also applies to our fellow human beings. There is no fear in love. Fear will keep you from loving the way that you should, the way that God wants you to. And perfect love drives fear out. So you can't have both. You either have fear or you have love. And God wants us to love. Jealousy leads to fear. And fear will keep you from seeing God at work in others. And fear will keep you from loving others as you should. So, in closing, we have this remarkable passage in 1 Samuel 18 where we see Jonathan's love for David, we see Saul's jealousy for David, and then Saul's resulting fear of David. And it illustrates for us the very simple truth that love brings you closer to people while jealousy and fear drive you apart. Hmm. Jesus died not only to save us from our sins, 
but to bring us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. There is only one kingdom, and that's the kingdom of God. And we are all in this together. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your love. Lord, sometimes, sometimes we, we thank you for what you've done for us, but we don't, we don't remember that you did it for us out of love. And Lord, there's so many times that we feel unlovable or unlovely, and yet you love us anyways. You loved us enough to, to send your son to die for us. You loved us enough to raise him from the dead, to conquer the power of sin in our lives. You raised him enough to be seated with you, to be our mediator. Father, you love us so much. Help us to remember that. Help us to think of that because every time we do, every time we remember your great love, it just lifts us up. And then, Lord, help us to lift each other up by loving each other the way that you want us to. Lord, help us to remember this story of Jonathan and David, but also of Saul. Help us to remember that love brings us together. Jealousy and fear separates us. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand and let's sing, Love Lifted Me.